The following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. Welcome to Gen XYZ. A very good evening to all our viewers. Um, as usual, we have selected a topic that is of contemporary value and a topic that is sensitive within society. So we want to really dissect this as, uh, as well as possible and give the proper messaging because this topic has become important within the public sphere as of today. And the topic is primarily going to be focused on pornography and the influence of pornography on the youth within Sri Lanka. Now, to discuss this, we have a very special individual, Dr. Ashok Priyadarshan. He's a psychologist and a lecturer in psychology. He has uh, experience with children, experience with uh, teaching people about this subject as well. Doctor, yeah. uh, a lot of important <coughs> things that we need to talk with you today. And uh, let's just start off with getting your take on the general understanding of how pornography has influenced the youth within this country. Where, where do you see this? Where is the standing that you take? Is it moving to a positive realm? Because uh, towards the end of the program, I want to talk about sex yes, education yes, and yes, things like that. Yes. What is your understanding of the current status quo? Uh, of course, now, before moving on to uh, what we are supposed to discuss today, of course, pornography and also youth, first of all, we have to understand uh, uh, what motives are. We have different motives, like, you know, uh, our, our, our existence uh, strongly depends upon uh, our motives. So basically, we are endowed with motives like uh, thirst, hunger, and also uh, uh, avoidance of pain. In the meantime, uh, sex, right? So uh, when it comes to this, you know, the Maslow's hierarchy, so everybody is familiar with this uh, Maslow's hierarchy. So it also stresses on the importance of fulfilling these uh, 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 primary motives. They are called, you know, biological motives. The we all have this. Needs. Yes, yeah. biological motives. Even when it comes to this Eastern philosophies also, we can see uh, that, you know, they also stress on that fact. Like uh, there is this, you know, the slok that you can uh, stanza that you can find ahar nidra by maithunancha, like that, which means that uh, these these motives are common to uh, uh, human beings as well as animals. But we differ from uh, 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 animals yes. mainly because you know we have control over that. Right. Okay, so when it comes to uh, sex, of course, some some people say that some scholars and some psychologists say that it goes beyond this. You know, the primary motives. Normally, we we, we understand that they they are, they are considered primary motives. Basically, sex motives are considered primary motives, biological motives. But uh, it it mo it it has it, it goes beyond that line. So some people say so. Uh, so anyway, when it comes to these motives, of course, we have this pushing factors as well as pulling factors, which means that when, you, when, we, when we are hungry, of course, we have these motives, which means that you are pushed towards, towards your it. goals, yeah. of course. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, there is another factor, which means pulling factors, which means that there are certain external determinants mm -hmm. that pull you towards it. Yeah. So these two, compo these two uh, factors are quite important. One is this pushing, the other one is pulling factors. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to pornography, of course, now you have this, you know, the inner kind of uh, uh, motives which are being pulled, pulled by kind of, you know, aroused in, in 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 that sense. Of course, we can talk about this, you know, the Freudian concepts. Yeah. Even though we we say that, you know, the Freudian concepts are outdated today, but still there is something that we can take into account. Like human personality basically uh, uh, is divided into three components. We are already familiar with that, I suppose. It ego and also super ego. Yes, it yes. consists of these impulses mm -hmm. like uh, sexual motives and, and, and other motives. So basically it consists of those things, which means that it works according to pleasure principle, which means that we, it, 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 is, it is always looking for pleasure. But when we have these motives, right, sometimes we have anger, we have sexual motives like that. These things could come to you, mm -hmm. right? These, these things would come to your mind. But when these things come to your mind, reach your mindset, but we have control over that. That is our super ego part, which means we have this moral, ethics, and val values, and etc. Why? Because when it comes to sex, of course, so another person is involved in it. 
So you can't you can't violate the other person's uh, rights. That right? consent so, is required. Exactly, exactly. So this ego and super ego concepts are also important. Mm -hmm. When it comes to uh, motives, once again, there is this uh, flow called need reduction. So I'm gradually moving on to this, you know, the pornography and also youth, right? So we we we, we uh, talk about this need reduction. When we have these needs, of course, which means there are drives in it, right? And and you are you are kind of you know pushed towards a particular goal. Once the goal is established, uh, reached, of course, right? The need is reduced, but but is the most dangerous word in English, <laughs> right? So uh, 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 when it comes to pornography, the thing is. Psychologists, some psychologists do say that one's desire could be enhanced, unlike uh, thirst and also uh, hunger and etc. Those things could be reduced, those needs could be reduced, right, according to this flow. But sex motives, of course, those things could be enhanced, right, could be enhanced when the person is exposed to pornography. So it is, it is there. So in that sense, these inner motives can be aroused, can be enhanced through this external kind of motives. Is that why you say it's, it goes beyond a primary motive as well, Pri goes beyond a primary need? E because there is sort of like a, it has the capacity to be more pulled, maybe the effect is higher, is that? Is that yeah, yeah. Now, 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 of course, when it comes to the superego factor, right, which means that we, we always talk about the socialization process, the importance mm -hmm. of socialization process, which means it's just like your conscience. Now, even though these thoughts keep coming to your mind, you have control over that, right? Which means that you're not going to violate another person's uh, rights. So, the super ego, kind of, you know, strengthening one's super ego is quite important in that sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, uh, uh, talking about uh, pornography, now we all, all, all know that it's an industry. Yeah. Right? Lots of people, you know, spend a large amount of money on that and also there are, there are you know, actors and actresses and etc. But there is this uh, neuron called uh, mirror neuron. Mirror neuron in the sense when you are watching a uh, movie, when you are watching a teledra teledrama also, you become a part of it. Without your awareness also, you become a part of it, which means that you are emotionally connected to it. You yeah, engage with the content. Yeah. Exactly. Now, when you when you are watching, when someone is watching pornography also, without your... Uh, Subconsciously. Yes, yeah. yes. Without your awareness even, these things could be registered in your you know, cognition, in your memory, right? So, sometimes, now, for instance, if you say, if you go to market, right? If you go to market and you buy certain stuff, right? And, and you come home and also you just see what you have bought. Right, and if you analyze the pr analyze the goods that you have bought, you can see that lots of advertisements have uh, manipulated Influence your. You to buy, yeah. Obviously, <laughs> yeah. so the same thing is happening when it comes to pornography. Also, there is this special uh, concept that we take into account when it comes to uh, sexual behavior. That is this, you know, the sex script. Exactly. I, I just wanted to ask you because you explained this to me very uh, well behind the stage. I believe our viewers would also very much like to know. Yeah. And uh, it really touches the core, uh, I believe, the principle of how people function in society. This yes. script that they have and how it can be influenced. Please carry on. Yes, of course. Everybody yeah. has a script, even yeah. in our lives also. Yeah. Right. There are, there are lots of people around us and each and everybody has a script. Now, there is this uh, uh, postmodern therapy. Uh, called uh, narrative therapy. It says that everybody has this narration. You have your own narration and I have my narration too. So when this narration becomes problematic, you have to deconstruct and then you have to reconstruct it. So suppose that in a person is having a particular disorder, which means according to this particular therapy, which means that the person might be having a problem with regard to his narration and you have to deconstruct and then you have to reconstruct. When it comes to sex scripts also, it, it is kind of a blueprint. It's a blueprint, right? Uh, untold uh, blue, uh, blue, uh, blueprint, right? Mm -hmm. So this script, once again, we have kind of this, you know, the idea, uh, kind of mental picture on sexual relationship. This is the way it has to be and etc. So that is a sexual script. So when someone is exposed to in a pornography, now we know that you know it's kind of it's an uh, it's an act, right? Uh, the, there was this you know the research done by uh, Collins and et al. And, and they said that you know uh, these pornographies mainly they, they they consist of this you know extreme sexual contents and also violent uh, contents. It's there. So now what happens is that when you are exposed to it, 
it can easily manipulate your sex i mean sex script and and in the meantime you act upon it even without your awareness okay. so it, it they they have the ability to manipulate your sex script mm -hmm. it's there so let's say now there are two individuals if these sex scripts are mismatching they are mismatched together right they are not compatible enough mm -hmm. so what will happen it's there so now uh, there was a there was a research done in sri oh, lanka oh, also yeah. on uh, that note dr something i want to clarify now viewers might get this question now if they if you're born with a sex script some a blueprint mm -hmm. we should we not get influenced at all from outside forces so like should we have certain ways we should educate ourselves in 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 informing that sex script better because i think you said that very well when you said we're to construct the narrative yes. if it's uh, problematic yes. Yeah. yes exactly it's it's a very good point now normally this sex script it's it's a short, it's, it's it's social constructed right it normally the okay, society so influences it, it on influences that. okay in the meantime the i mean the existing values and normal uh, norms so and standards values ethics and all i mean all those things influence on that in the meantime people people have this individual script also people have this you know individual and also intrapersonal interpersonal intrapersonal which means that you have your own dialogue with your sex script as well so how do they learn then how do le how do they learn this uh, sex scripts when someone is exposed to it now of course you know that when it comes to sex education in sri lanka what is the reality of course There's even people we need to evolve even though we are we are talking about you know uh, these things of course many people are searching for it but you know few talk about it hence that's, it that's a, a reality <laughs> uh, yeah that's 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 a reality mm -hmm. of course right so what will happen to this you know especially a uh, sex script now sex education that is that is why i say sex education is a must in a country like sri lanka because this script has to be properly created in one's mind if not things will be really you know problematic mm -hmm. that is that is what i would say yeah. in the meantime there is another thing called uh, sexual agenda right uh, right i i i want to <laughs> that's a very good point to take yes. because next i want to talk about behavior yeah. and we can we can really touch on this uh, doctor we had to go in for a very short break yeah. uh, and we will come back and we'll continue this discussion we are going to touch on behavior next and how pornography influences this behavior uh, stay with us on gen x y z as we continue this discussion Gen X Y Z. We're in conversation with Dr. Ashok Priyadarshan, a doctor. Uh, 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 excellent, uh, I should say, context that you provided to this uh, conversation, and I interrupted you when you said uh, agenda. Yes. I want you to connect that, doctor. Now we can take a bit of time here mm -hmm. because there are multiple behavioral changes that people go through when it comes to pornography uh, more on the bad end over the good end. So I want to really touch on that because. since you very well mentioned the people should get this education from somewhere and yes, like you are yes. you're really providing like the breakdown very well so i want to get like get the full use from you when we you know within our studios uh well, let's let's talk now where some place you corrected me when we were outside was mm. you don't associate the term addiction with yes. pornography yes if you yes. can start there dr why is uh, that because yeah according to uh, dsm now, now uh, we we stick to this you know diagnostic and statistical manual of disorders and also they uh, they don't say that you know it's an addiction right but there can be a uh, uh, mobile phone addiction also when someone is addicted to mobile phones automatically uh, so you are you, you have this you know uh, accessibility to uh, to uh, you have this access to uh, watch you know phone so it's 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 there mm -hmm. so i just uh, stopped there i mean when i was talking about this agenda yeah. yes agenda and also scripts because these those things those concepts are quite important in the meantime uh, uh, talking about the sexual scripts also now there is something called parapedias right it is something that we have to be focused on parapelias in the sense para means beyond pelias means love beyond love which means that you know it is not acceptable right uh, kind of uh, sexual deviant uh, we said the deviant behavior sexual deviant behavior so it's it's those those contents or those uh, 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 clips could be could be seen in 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 in, in webs and etc so if you analyze so uh, there can be uh, certain sexual deviant behaviors like uh, fetishism which means that some people have this uh, uh, recurrent uh, urges fantasies towards uh, non uh, non human objects 
it's there sometimes you know you have these people won't believe but you know it's it's there uh, people have that yeah. and people keep uh, keep let's say keep uh, fantasizing these these uh, paraphilia sometimes and and that is enhanced by these external visual stimulus now of course when it comes to stimuli visual stimuli can easily be stored in your mind in your memory right it, it it is there of course you can easily bring into your mindset as well so when you're exposed to these things without your awareness also those things could be you know registered in your memory so now like like i said uh, paraphilias like i said sexual deviant behaviors fetishism and uh, nowadays of course we are we are talking about this uh, uh, pedophilia mm -hmm. right pedophilia in the sense sometimes some individuals have this uh, uh, recurrent sexual fantasies uh, towards uh, underage children right even i think uh, this is indeed a timely value discussion and this is something that we have to discuss and and if you analyze it right if you analyze this you know the bond clips of course you can see that those things are promoted right those uh, tendencies have been promoted and and when someone is exposed to it like i said it is registered in one's mindset mm -hmm. right and and on the other hand uh, some people have this you know they they can easily access to children because you know uh, they won't say anything right they can easily be manipulated that's what that's what people think right when when they when they are exposed to this thing on the other hand when it comes to sadism sadism is another uh, uh, deviant behavior sexual deviant behavior that we could uh, see through you know uh, uh, porn clips in mm -hmm. most cases which mm -hmm. means that you gain gratification by harming another person that is sadism sadism is uh, is is highly prevalent now even there are certain uh, 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 certain places in the country also where this service is provided people won't believe but that is the case that is that is the thing of course now uh, there are certain other things like exhibitionism mm -hmm. it is also promoted and and voyeurism which means which is uh, which is known as a uh, peeping tom mm -hmm. right yeah, yeah. those days we talked about this in you know, the grease yaka factor mm -hmm. right so those things were uh, those things are also promoted by this uh, these these visual clips mm -hmm. right and and uh, uh, exhibitionism pedophilia and sadism masochism masochism in the sense it's another sexual deviant behavior which means they gratify they 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 get this in you know, a gratification by harming themselves by by harming oneself of course mm -hmm. right so it is also there these things are promoted through this visual uh, stimuli and they are registered in your in in one's mindset and what will happen to one's uh, sexual script then when let's say that uh, a young person when the person is not having this you know the sex education proper sex education the person is exposed to it and the person is generalizing it and those concept can be easily generalized then and and they might think they could think that you know it's a way things are happening Here. the behavior will be mimicked in real life yeah. exactly exactly <coughs> on, on the other hand now uh, there is this you know the psychologist called uh, uh, alfred bandura and he mentions uh, this you know the special concept called observational learning social learning which means that we have this you know the uh, we when we see something you observe and you imitate it for instance when you are exposed to this uh, aggressive movies right violent uh, violent movies of course right uh, you have this you know the, the, the that tendency aggressive nature which means that you internalize it so the same thing could happen to your uh, sexual script when you are exposed to these video clips also mm -hmm. and on the other hand i mentioned about sexual agenda yeah. sexual agenda in the sense suppose that there are two persons like mm -hmm. if you take if you talk about heterosexuality i'm not talking about the other 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 aspects yeah. also we will we'll talk about uh, some other day right so heterosexuality in the sense normal i mean uh, uh, male and female sexual relationship now people have they do have their own agendas this is the way i enter this you know the sexual particular sexual relationship and 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 their their agendas could you know differ could be you know different to each other yeah right so now there was this in you know, a research done uh, using uh, married couples also they could be found that when married people married especially males majority of them are males of course uh, when it comes to statistics of course uh, uh, males are the ones males are the one who who frequently use uh, um, is it use pornography or mimic 
<coughs> pornography is okay. right yeah. especially pornography yeah. Yeah. especially they 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 use in in, yeah. in most cases mm -hmm. even recently there was this in you know, the research done in uh, sweden uh, it could found out that uh, 98% of males uh, uh, have been exposed to yes it, yeah. yes it's there so uh, when it comes to sexual agenda let's say that married couples when especially married uh, uh, male okay when the per when that person is exposed to this type of you know uh, let's say violent content violent uh, type of you know sexual motive sexual uh, uh, pornography video clips right what would happen to their relationship right and 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 research also suggests that uh, i have my own experience also uh, a long time before uh, I, uh, i i came across this uh, special case as well mm -hmm. there also that uh, that particular lady uh, wife was compelled to have kind of you know uh, group sex right right and 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 she she was you know really reluctant and also she she tried to commit suicide mm. but you know she did not have any other option because she had two children right so uh, uh, husband of course and she was strongly addicted i don't i mean addicted in the sense casually i use the word addiction right mm -hmm. so she was he was strongly addicted to uh, this you know the, the specific behavior specific behavior and pornography so also right. right and and uh, so uh, she was she was compelled compelled to be engaged in that Participate particular in activity that, yeah. Yeah. right it was also there so you can see that even sexual agendas right there could be you know uh, problems with regard to sexual agenda so also when someone is exposed to yeah. doctor yes. i think i just want because we i want to touch on this later on but where does consent play a role in all of this because now people watching will be of different backgrounds will be they might be facing these situations they might have never faced these situations they they might look at this from an observational point of view consent is something that we need to ingrain into people's minds because even within a relationship you neither married couple mm -hmm. consent is extremely exactly, vital exactly. and uh, that is sort of like the right the power that every individual possesses within themselves that sort of is extracted maybe depicted as extracted within pornography mm -hmm. maybe that is something that will be inculcated within behavior of people how do we empower consent within people how how do you see all of the consent playing into here yeah it's it's indeed it's indeed tough right tough question to be answered of course because uh, uh, okay, it, it's really hard to be you know generalized exactly. in those things of course because you know cases are different from one to another so okay. it's it's there it's really hard to be you know once again generalize uh, like i mentioned about you know this sexual deviant behavior so this you know the non consenting individuals you know having sexual uh, kind of fantasies towards this you know the non consenting individuals also that also comes under that right it also there on the other hand there are some you know stereotypes which are produced by this uh, pornography also it's just like this you know normally male male they initiate this you know the sexual relationship in most cases of course they initiate themselves right in 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 intercourse also the sexual relationship right but uh, 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 this, there are certain stereotypes attached to it like uh, uh, you can easily persuade the women that sort of thing mm, yeah, right? right in the meantime incest it is also kind of you know Acceptable, promoted yeah, yeah, yeah it, it's it's also there and it, I mean, we need to analyze i mean before of course uh, uh, banning them also right exactly. it's it's needed to analyze these things uh, because it's available everywhere it's people available. people are exposed one yeah. way or another way of course you know people They'll have this access yeah. now now there is this uh, special uh, term that was uh, special theory that was recently introduced it is called triple a engine Mm. triple a engine in the sense now there was a time when it comes to pornography also there were there are some traditional forms there are some traditional forms which means uh, uh, people used to buy these magazines and also so called uh, what do you call uh, uh, video decks and etc so uh, people used to buy them in written materials and etc but nowadays of course people have this uh, Uh, mobile and they can easily access it and three three a uh, uh, triple a engine in the sense uh, when you have mobiles of course availability is there hmm. it's available hmm. it's at your fingertips right you can easily watch it on the other hand uh, um, it's it's affordable and also anonymity is there those are the three those three uh, three a's are quite important i suppose yeah you can you know keep those things in your in mind. mind yeah i right. think that a, a very important classification that is done when it comes to pornography because you see when it comes to other needs there are regulatory authorities that yes. are available when it comes to food or anything like this but when it comes to pornography it's a little different so i i want to touch on that as well doctor mm -hmm. we'll take a very short break yes. mm -hmm. uh yeah with gen xyz stay with us
Welcome back to Gen XYZ. We are in conversation with Dr. Ashok Priyadarshana. Doctor, uh, I interrupted you when you explained mm. a very good concept of like to explain yes. the current situation, the AAA. Yeah. Uh, please continue on that line and I need to get your understanding of how this regulation can happen and the stakeholders, people like parents and everyone. Mm -hmm. We need to go there, but Doctor, yeah, continue. Yes, yes. Now, uh, we talked about this, you know, the AAA concept, AAA uh, engine, that is called AAA mm. engine, which means that even though we don't use the word addiction, now when you have this you know the phone like I said so people can be addicted to phones in that sense now uh, in the meantime before I you know forget uh, this of course I have to uh, I have to um, uh, stress on this fact actually now how do you exactly draw this line uh, normality and also abnormality now even like I said you know uh, most of most of the people have, let's say uh, it's really hard to find a male who has not, you know, watched uh, yeah. one clip, I suppose, yeah. right? So it's there. Is it abnormal or normal? So that is something that we have to take into account once again, right? So uh, uh, is uh, you explain this outside, doctor? Yes. Is abnormal a term we use in this case, or beyond normal? You explain that. Yes, way? yes, and and even even we ask not to use the word abnormal. abnormal. We, uh, yes, we we uh, we ask to use the word not normality, right? It's because in you know, other word, it's it's a spectrum, right? I mean, uh, uh, the way you define abnormality in this particular country will differ from different another, different. right? But but in the meantime, there are you know certain criteria that we take into account. Even let's say that you know there is a person who is uh, who keeps watching uh, uh, porn clips and just see whether these these things are there whether these uh, criteria are there and if these criteria are there of course I think it's better to uh, consult uh, a professional to seek you know further assistance, assistance I suppose yeah. now uh, when it comes to these four D's they are called you know the four D's one is this uh, distress Th that's one of the important factors distress in the sense whenever the person is not able to uh, uh, watch pornography he experiences stress distress sort of like a symptom a withdrawal symptom withdrawal yeah. kind of symptoms yeah. so it is it, i mean it, it the, these concepts can be applied to a certain other other uh, disorders also mm -hmm. so but since we are talking about this special topic of course these things can also be applied one is this you know the uh, distress the other one is you know the deviant or the deviation so just you you yourself analyze can analyze whether whether whether, whether i have this you know the deviant type of behavior in most cases what happens is that you are just governed by your thoughts right and Osho once said uh, Osho I mean we have heard of Osho and he says that uh, mind uh, can be a bad master but can be a good servant right in most cases what happens is that mind keeps shaping us and also keeps you know pushing us towards something that's it what happens in, direct comments, yeah. in, 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 in most cases so uh, uh, it's there now you can you yourself can see whether uh, I have this in you know, the deviant tendency deviation is another factor it's a, it's a criteria it's another criterion that we use to see whether the person's uh, behavior is not normal uh, I mentioned about two factors one is distress the other one is deviant there is another factor that is called dysfunction right dysfunctioning in the sense now when someone is addicted to something once again I use <laughs> the word addiction uh, casually right okay so when someone is addicted to something uh, uh, the person might deviate from his day-to-day -day activities which means that it results in dysfunctions right so we have this day-to-day -day activities we are functioning right when someone is exposed to let's say pornography and etc the person would forget all the other things right and the person is not concerned about any other things right this becomes uh, the priority and the all the other other activities are stopped right and hindered obstructed and as a result of that that will result in dysfunctions on the other hand danger that's the most important thing. danger in the sense whether you harm someone or harm yourself, yourself. yourself. I mentioned about sadism yeah right I mentioned about sadism when someone uh, 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 get you know gets gets gratification so the person would harm someone and gratification is gained through this you know the harming they would also pursue that to gain that satisfaction yes and you mentioned about that the consent aspect as yeah. well and you are not concerned about the consent anymore right since we are talking about this you know the child abuses and everything even with their consent also right it consent is, is not taken into account they are you know when it comes children. to yes of course right because uh, they, they, they are beyond, they are they are they are beyond, i mean they are not up to their uh, intellectuality right it's 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 there so it, it, it also comes now on the other hand harm to oneself 
right harm to oneself these four factors can be used to see whether your uh, behavior is normal or not normal i uh, uh, recap once again one is this you know the um, distress the other one is uh, deviation uh, dysfunction and also the danger. danger those are the four factors right so you can you yourself can measure these aspects as well since you uh, uh, talked about this you know the parenting aspect that is also another important uh, aspect that we have yeah. to talk just to give some sort of context to why i am asking this yes. question doctor uh, because parents this is not a fault of the parents it's got sort of like the context and the atmosphere and the background and they want the best for their children yes, they yes, try to exactly. shield the child from all dangers that is present within yes, society yes, yes. and uh, the general method they do it is to stop and to restrict to bar and to really not have that uh, exposure exactly. made exactly that is something i think we have learned throughout education and the evolution of education that that removing experiences is not the way going forward to going in proper education how do you see that doctor what is the parents role in this because there will be parents watching there will be children watching there will be the different stakeholders how yes. how should a parent work in this parents scenario? role is quite i mean it's really vital now uh, when it comes to this you know the youth how do you how do you demarcate right this you know the demarcation uh, of youth of course uh, those who are those who are in between 15 to 24 <laughs> right they are considered youth according to un definition so that can, can that can be different once again so there can be certain other definitions also this is the this is the age period where actually they are looking for their identity right so identity now eric erickson the uh, he he's he's a he's a psychologist and he says that this particular age period is quite crucial because we are looking for this identity if the person is not able to identify himself skills desires interest and everything that might result in confusion so parents role is quite vi- quite vital here so we help our our, our, our students our, our children to find themselves identity it's there so please keep that in your mind on the other hand Uh, we are talking about this you know the democratic family style it's an ideal type of you know uh, family type but still you know we can work on that and also we can act it out and there are these you know three components that we always talk about democratic family style right mm-hmm. these three components please keep those things in your mind when you are dealing with your this is also a western sort of concept or yes yes okay. yes one is this uh, uh, love love in the sense uh, parents show their love towards their children but uh, it should not go beyond the limit right sometimes you know i will explain later on there are certain family styles also and on the other hand fun fun is also there right but most importantly control but these three aspects should be uh, balanced if one goes out of control right and that will result in uh problem so it's also there so talking about parenting styles right this is called democratic type of family style which is known as authoritative family style authoritative parenting right the conversation that you are having with your children now of course unlike those days we all know that you know sri lanka is a collectivist country mm-hmm. so called collectivist country mm-hmm. but of course now we see whether we are moving towards this individualistic nature individualistic nature in the sense collectivism in the sense people get together and they talk you know when, whenever it is needed to uh, get together Problems people get sorted off as a team even <laughs> in a funeral yeah. and also weddings and etc people get together now of course you can see that how people use mobile phones and also they just focus on themselves which means we are just gradually moving towards that Isolating individual us. it's the yeah, individualistic nature individualism yeah it's there on the other hand so we can't we can't prevent you know uh, the world people from, yes yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's that's there but the problem is we need to we need to think about uh, iq as well as eq in most cases as parents we always talk about iq so you have to be like this and the level of intelligence that should be enhanced and etc you go to you know tuition classes and you will be like this and etc which means that you set goals you set goals what will happen to eq eq in the sense it's about empathy when someone is suffering 
you have that you know the feeling that you know just like you know if i were on your shoes sort of thing if that aspect is also promoted by parents without being much concerned about i, I don't say that you know parents should not uh, drive their child drive their you know children towards uh, iq factors yes they should in the meantime eq factor is quite important empathy not only empathy but also how to regulate your emotions also you can't just act out all these emotions you know uh, in our society there are certain norms and values of course emotional regulation these things come under eq we see whether we are we are moving towards this you know the uh, individualistic nature and when we are moving towards that you will not be concerned about others even when it comes to sexual behaviors and etc you are thinking about yourself without thinking about the other person so we come across lots of cases right there are lots of you know family issues now they come to us and they complain about something but the major issue major issue is that they are having certain you know sexual incompatibilities and they are not thinking about the other person and how i should gratify myself that is what they think mm -hmm. right so eq aspect is quite important mm -hmm. here so the parents role is quite important in that aspect mm -hmm. on the other hand i think we can discuss about this parenting styles also yeah we should oh, yeah doctor i uh, very important place where you ended there on yes. empathy and yeah, we can yeah. really take that forward doctor we'll take a very short break your gen x y z stay with us we are going to go into our last segment next and get a final messaging from the doctor about how we can really face this scenario in the real world uh, stay with us this gen x y z Jen X Y Z, you are on our last segment. We have been in conversation with Dr. Ashok Priyadarshan on pornography and it, and the influence that has had on a variety of levels on the youth. Uh, doctor, again, I had to interrupt you when you were explaining something very important, which was parenting styles. And within that, you brought this very important concept uh, of empathy. Yes, and yes, I, yes, I yes. from from listening to what you are saying, I see that empathy is what will give a proper understanding of consent. to these people and that is something that even like within our lives we have we have really discovered that teaching the importance of consent has become crucial within yes, this country yes. and i think empathy is sort of like the method to we can get there uh, what are the parenting styles doctor well because parents are also under stress parents are also yes, yes, under yes, yes, a lot yes, yes. a lot of social pressures which is why they sort of like think iq is the way forward and eq is something they'll develop in the way but now we have realized that is not the case and you have explained that as well how do you approach parenting styles doctor yes before moving on to that since i was talking about this empathy aspect yeah, of yeah. course now uh, uh, we are drive i mean we are driving our children kind of uh, towards this you know the iq aspect in case i mean in that case of course you know what happens is that we are missing this important point uh, eq right which includes uh, empathy and also emotion regulation so empathy is just like you know uh, 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 phenomenological concept like you know people have this phenomenological world you have your own phenomenological world i have my own phenomenological world so if i am not able to understand your phenomenological world and how you think and how you perceive things and how you feel that's the end of it now of course you know since i am working with elderly population in in sri lanka of course i have seen that and and they are just they they are waiting until their children come to them of course right it's it's there and and i question all the time whether we miss something that is eq yeah. right whether we miss we missed it and and yes of course we need to drive our children towards uh, iq that is there but in the meantime e eq it's quite important once again i straight on stress on that fact and talking about this in you know, the parenting style so once again uh, uh, if you can doctor relate that now you have really explained psychology to us yes. i want you to relate that also to pornography and how parents can 
when they witness this issue of pornography, how they should react in those scenarios? Oh, that, that is something now. It's difficult again in situations. It, yeah, it? yeah, it varies according to the you know the situation. Like like I said, you know, it's really hard to generalize. Now, of course, you know, in 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 most discussions, of course, we have been asked to generalize these things, but mm. you know, once it's again, harmful in a way. it's real. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 totally you know it's really hard to do it but uh, on the other hand uh, once again we are reluctant to talk about these facts you know uh, in general we don't like to table them that's that's the most that 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 that, that, that is what we are you know coming across in, in most situations of course right I mean this particular topic keyword right that is kind of you know uh, that is out of uh, uh, focus in most cases yeah. if we can you know bring that to focus as well and also uh, you can have this you know kind of you know conversation like like I mentioned about this, you know, authoritative families, right? There are certain families like authoritarian and authoritative. In authoritarian, authori uh, authoritative families, right? Authoritarian family, of course, you know, in parenting styles, children are not given enough space to grow up. They are punished and also they become, you know, kind they of, restricted. you know, they are restricted, right? But when it comes to authoritative families, of course, these parents, of course, they talk right they, they they talk you know uh, they they uh, communicate to each other and also they are comfortable enough to talk about this aspect just like you know this uh, love uh, fund control co concepts those concepts are there in those families in such situations of course it is really easy for someone to have this you know be endowed with empathy because this kind of you know mutual kind of uh, uh, understanding and mutual kind of you know communication it is there that is this you know that is why we always ask parents to promote that particular uh, family style parenting style so I mean, it is applicable to everything even someone is in someone is in trouble of course you will help when it comes to even sexual relationship it is also applicable and whether you are uh, before you harm to someone you just think about his or her situation that is also there so it, it is applicable to each and everything so this parenting style is quite important authoritative parenting style right there are some other parenting styles also like permissive parenting style which means that Parents don't mind whatever their children do. No restrictions. Love is there. Love is kind of unconditional. No boundaries. Nothing. Right? Uh, uh, children can do whatever they could do. Of course, you know, even you don't control them. Control has to be there. There has to be. To because Yes, of course. Why do we control someone? Because one's, one's freedom should not interrupt the other person. Exactly. That is there. So, it should also be there. In the, in the meantime, there are certain families like uninvolved families. Uninvolved families, no love, no fun, no control, nothing is there. In such cases, children become frustrated and also there is a correlation between frustration and aggression. Frustration might lead to aggression. In the meantime, there was this in you know, the research done recently. It was found out that those who are frustrated might uh, be exposed to pornographies and that might result in sadistic behaviors also. It because is also they have no direction that is given. Yeah. It is also there. In, in, in such situations, of course, that is why we say parenting role is quite important, right? So even one's personality, when it comes to one's personality, there are traits, traits in the sense they are, they are just like you know the building blocks of a personality. Right, so uh, some of these traits are inherited, whereas some of them are learned. How do how do we learn these traits? We learn these traits through our parents initially. Then we move to the society, and then we learn. Initially, parents are the one actually who could internalize these positive traits and build the personality. At the end of the day, of course, you can't do anything. You can't blame the person, right? Sometimes it happens when they are in a broken families. These are the things that we obviously see, right? They become frustrated and also there are certain issues in, in relation to their personality, personality traits, they are not properly uh, constructed, it's there, they are not concerned about their children also. At the end of the day, there can be certain, you know, antisocial behaviors and etc. Mm -hmm. So who is going to mm -hmm. ask about that, you know, yeah. uh, at the end of the day? There's a trickling down effect. I think uh, that explanation you made very well, Doctor, that if we can really focus on a sort of positive sustainable parenting that will get the child aware and will be clearer in facing situations in the real world. My maybe towards as our last question doctor, yes. I, like you face these situations, you meet real life patients, you re meet real life children who are yes. facing this issue yes. and pornography has become sort of like an issue within society. How, what general advice do you give to the youth in 
when they come to you what is the i know it's very difficult to generalize yeah, these topics yeah. how how should we really look at this should we rethink the way we have educated ourselves when it comes to sex when it comes to pornography how how can we approach this topic? yes once since i mentioned about these sexual scripts it's better to be aware of these sexual scripts once again i keep on stressing on that fact because in most cases like i said we are governed by our, our own thoughts and also we are not aware of that fact right when it even when it comes to you know sexual intercourses and sexual relationships the same things are the same, same thing, thing things could happen now we sh- if we are aware of these facts right these visual stimuli are there right I, I, like, like i said of course you know people watch males they watch yeah. right and if we if they know that there is this you know the danger in it right there is this you know the particular danger in it and they, this might you know in danger not only me but also another person right that is that is the thing like i said those four four aspects four d's please go keep those things in your mind all the time right i can't ask them to you know stop <laughs> yeah. watching and etc because it is not going to happen it's so not practical even sense. even even when you're trying to control something psychology is that when no, you are trying to control it that you know the, the intensity of that problem becomes you know maximized it is there so it's not all about you know controlling thing it's all about your observation i mean it, you need to observe yourself and 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 see whether whether my uh, my uh, behavior is correct and right and whether i'm harming someone and and it harms me on the other hand so those are the things that i think i have to uh, uh, give uh, to my uh, uh, young the young viewers Yeah. Um, and and also parents uh, it's it's needed of course parents need to keep an eye on them also mm-hmm. and uh, need to stick to those uh, uh, kind of you know the love and control aspects mm-hmm. in the meantime um, uh, just uh, while they while parents are moving their children towards uh, iq please be concerned about eq, EQ as, as well, as well. Yeah. doctor we have few more minutes and i want to touch yeah. on this last aspect real world relationships now you spoke uh, something i caught from the 4d was dysfunction yes and dysfunction could trickle down to your behavior either sexually or mm-hmm. either interpersonal sort of skills real sort of world relationships do you recommend these either patients or people that are inflicted or people that find their outlet in pornography mm-hmm. and the people that go to that f- to find any form of affection is it a solution to go towards real world relationships i know you told me that we are now looking at uh, isolating ourselves yes. the society is more prone to isolation mm-hmm. is the solution to go back to people is the solution i'm just suggesting mm-hmm. is the solution to go and create these interpersonal relationships again to understand one another better or, or should like i think sex education is one mm-hmm. one pivotal solution mm-hmm. but apart from that is this also another solution that we can look into yes obviously now uh, even when it comes to love let's talk about this if you talk about love right between uh, husband and wife also uh, once again uh, we talk about three concepts that is this you know the theory of love there is mm-hmm. something called theory of love of robert sternberg yeah. and there also we talk about this you know the intimacy and we mm-hmm. talk about uh, uh, passion right and also commitment those are the, those are the three aspects also and and which means that once again uh, it's just like uh, try trying to understand the other person exactly that's where empathy comes again yes yes it does not happen you know spontaneously it should happen i mean at the very beginning of one's life of course and uh, sigmund freud mentioned about this you know the super ego concept super ego concept i mean that, that is how we know uh, how we started the conversation super ego it consists of these norms and values and etc so those things are there those things should be there otherwise of course you know these impulses would harm someone Yeah. so it's there so this socialization process in this socialization process so we need to make people aware of these facts and also how to perceive the other person's perception and how uh, other person's phenomenological world that that is quite important so my my my, my argument is oh, i mean mm-hmm. every time i i mention about these things you are living in a competitive world it's true it's true but on top of everything be a human being 
Right. <laughs> That's the most important. That's the most important. I think a very, very good note to end our discussion, Dr. Ashok Priyadarshana. I learned a lot from this discussion. I'm Thank sure you. our viewers would have also learned a lot more. Uh, a psychologist and a lecturer in psychology, I'm from the content that you have told us, I'm pretty sure you're effective in both of those fields. Uh, thank you once again for joining us, Doctor, for yeah, taking sure. the time. I thank our viewers for staying with us on Gen XYZ. Join us again next week as we bring again another contemporary topic that is related to the youth. Uh, thank you for staying with us on Other Than 24. Have a great evening. Mm -hmm.